the Nationals have signed Patrick Corbin, which a lot of people said was the Yankees' number one target. Again, that's what people said. The Yankees never said it. And I think the Yankees have, have come up with a paradigm that they are not going to deviate from, that people of a certain age are not going to get more than a five-year contract. They feel uncomfortable with it. Six years, 140, Six, Jeff Passon Oh, my saying. goodness. Six years, 140? Yeah. I wonder if it was the 140 that got them other six years. Well, the Yankees weren't willing to go more than five. We don't know what the number would have been. But I guess the six years, one that's a lot, that's a lot that's of money. A lot of money, It's a lot of money for a pitcher that I think is good, but still, you know, we don't know how he's going to. No, he stays in the National League. All right, so. So, so what do you do now if you're the Yankees? And just in terms, uh, uh, one thing that scared me today you know, the Yankees will then, you know, double back and, you know, the, they reconsider, you know, going after Rivaldi, who the Red Sox say they want. So you're going to have to battle the Red Sox. And they'll also look back at Jay Happ yeah. and Lance, Lance Lynn. Mm. Did anybody watch Lance Lynn? I sure did. Why would, you, why would you bring back Lance Lynn? He'd be your number five starter. CeCe would have sent to number four. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem at all with Jay Happ. Jay Happ's a pro. Yeah, he's 36 years old. You give him a two- or three-year deal at a decent number. He knows how to get people out. He's pitched in the division. He's been there and done that. I like that. Avaldi, he was unbelievable in the, uh, the postseason, heroic in that extra inning World Series game. So many things you like about him. He's proven that he could pitch in New York. He spent two years with the Yankees. Or the Yankees could go the route of trying to trade for one of the Cleveland pitchers. But then they, have, they would have to give up some of their young talent. Yep. That's the difference between making a trade mm -hmm. and going the free agent route. The free agent route just costs money. See, we talked before the season ended that they have choices of either going after free agents, which is just money, or having to siphon through their prospects. Well, you gave up some to, get C to go to Seattle for Paxton, and if you have to do that for Kluber, if that's who they get, apparently the Mets are in on him too. That's what's interesting about this. The Mets, they hasn't shut down the rumors. You're hearing about Harper. You're hearing about them. They're going to try to get Kluber. But now you're going to have to trade all these prospects away. You, you can go from having all these great prospects, and then you fast forward a year and a half later, right, where they, it was late in the 2016 season, they made all those deals. And right. you start, they start to uh, erode away when you start making all these trades. So, I mean, if all things were being equal, and, and they like Avaldi and Hap the same, well, the fact that Evaldi would go to the Red Sox and be a thorn in their side, although I don't agree with what Jeff Wolfon said, we, we got Edwin Diaz to block the Phillies from getting him. You don't get him because you want to block the Red Sox from getting him. You get him because you really like him. And the second positive out of that is to keep him out of the Red Sox hands. But if you like Hap better, I don't have a problem going with Hap. Hap, no. Behave like a pro, big-time guy. I really liked him a lot. Would you con consider that enough of bolstering the staff? That would be Severino, Tanaka, um, Paxton. Paxton, Hap, and CeCe. Yeah, because what you're looking for now is a fourth starter. Right. If you're lucky enough to get a third starter. Well, you'd starter, love to get a second. If you get Kluber or... Right, well, then obviously right. the, the, the pecking order changes, but Hap and Evaldi are sliding as your four, right? No, no, I, I think Evaldi would probably... Boy, that's a great question. I guess you'd have to see the efficacy of the pitchers early yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes Tanaka gets out of the gate slowly. So it's debatable. It's debatable. So I, I wouldn't... I, would, you're not looking I mean, for an Severino, ace. I think, is your ace. Point is, you're not looking for an you ace. You would like to have gotten an ace. But it's not necessary. Right. If Severino bounces back, Tanaka stays healthy. That's a nice one-two punch at the top of your rotation. Paxton stays healthy as well. You've rounded out a nice rotation. I'm amazed at that money, man. That's the report. So that's that's over twenty three million a year, if, mm -hmm. if my math is correct. And you're good at math. Very good. Now Johan D says, "Sure, glad Yanks didn't sign Corbin. Not worth that type of money. Yanks can get two really good starters for that moolah. Well, I don't know if they could get two. The price of pitching is very well. Now, now that becomes like the standard, where you're going to have to start paying a lot of money. Hap's price may have gone up. Ivaldi's price might have gotten up based on this." Jack Curry tweets out moments ago, with several folks reporting Corbin to Nationals on six-year deal, Yanks have to move to plan B. Happen of all the in the mix. When I spoke with Cashman a few days ago, he spoke highly of Corbin, but Yankees didn't want to go past five years. With some eager bidders, I figured it would take six, and that's exactly what it did. Wow. 